My name is Kevin Snyder here for Tuts Plus. Let's take a look at what we're going to be making today. Alright, so we're going to use a couple programs to create this. We're going to use geometry or actually splines that we have made in Adobe Illustrator. We're going to take those over into Cinema 4D. We're going to extrude those and then we're going to use the bend deformer to have them intersect with this plane that makes the floor to make it look like they're being peeled up. And it's a pretty versatile technique. You can use it with obviously just about any shape you want. And then for the ribbon that comes in, we're going to create the ribbon in Cinema 4D and then animate it along a path. Okay, and then in Cinema 4D, we're not going to really add a whole lot of color to this. It's going to be basically grayscale. We are going to use a free preset for Cinema 4D to light this really nicely. And then we'll take it over into After Effects where we will colorize everything using Luma Mats. So we'll explore a couple different ways to use Luma Mats in After Effects. And we'll uh, combine a few of those Luma Mats as well to make new mats. So let's jump right in and get started. Okay, here we are in Adobe Illustrator. For the snowflakes, we're going to use vector art to take those over into Cinema 4D. Now, these snowflakes are made up of just one continuous path. So if you look over here in the layers panel, you can see that it's just one path. And then I have my second snowflake, same thing. We just want to make sure that it's saved in the right version so that we can properly import those into Cinema 4D. So if I come up here and do File, save as. I already have it saved but I'll just overwrite it and for the version we want to make sure that we choose Illustrator 8 and say OK. Now we can jump over to Cinema 4D and import these paths. In Cinema 4D for my project file I'm going to set the frames per second to 24 and if you don't see the project settings here you can press Control D on the keyboard for the render settings, I have this at 1920 by 1080, and I have the frame rate here at 24 as well. Um, the frame range, I have just 0 to 72 here. That'll be changed down the line, but I'll just leave it here for now. Let's go ahead and import our splines from Illustrator. So I'm going to go to File, Merge Objects, and I'll choose Snowflake number 1. For the scale, I'll leave it as 1. And for the coordinates, let's go ahead and zero this out. Okay, let's go ahead and extrude this. We'll start with something um, kind of small for right now. Let's just go at 3. And we may adjust that down the line. Now we actually want the bottom of the snowflake to be right here at Zero, zero, 0 so let's go into the modify axis mode and let's just move that down to the bottom let's get in here and take a look okay that looks good and now I'm actually going to come in here with our coordinates and let's put that back to zero. Okay, we want to add a bend deformer to this to go ahead and get the curl. And in order to do that, we're going to put this into a null. So I'm going to do Alt G. And let's name this snowflake 01. And let's go ahead and add a bend deformer and put it inside the null here. And for the object, let's go fit to parent. And actually, that won't work because um, we have this as a child of the null here. So I'm going to bring this down to the snowflake real quick, do fit to parent, and then move it back up. Okay. Now, if we change the strength here, we can see that the bend is going the wrong direction. Okay, so we're just going to go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees. And I'm holding down shift to snap in 10 degree increments. And now we have it going the right way, um, but 
it scaled wrong, so I'm just going to put it back down here as a child of the spline, hit fit to parent, and then I'll move it back up. Okay, and we want this snowflake to bend from the ground. So let's go ahead and select the null, and let's go ahead and rotate that 90 degrees. So let's just check our bend. So we want it to bend up, and we want this just to bend it up to a maximum of 90 degrees because we want it to be uh, perpendicular to the ground. So obviously that doesn't look quite right right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale our bend deformer as this thing moves up. Okay. So if we scale it here in the y direction, we can get something that has a little bit sharper edge to it, something like that. So let's go ahead and actually set a few keyframes here. So maybe let's just say that this is going to take, I don't know, let's go with 32 frames. So let's set the endpoint. So I want this to be, have a fairly sharp curve here at the bottom. All right, so we're going to set a keyframe for the size, and then let's go ahead and set a keyframe for the coordinates as well. And then when this thing starts at frame zero, let's go ahead and move this back. But I don't want it to start really sharp with a really sharp bend like that. I want it to be a little bit more gradual. So let's bring it out here. Let's also scale the size of the bend here. So let's move it back so that the bend is all the way off of the snowflake. Right there, hold down control and click to set a keyframe. And same for the coordinates. So now when this thing comes in, that looks good. It's gonna start off a really gradual bend and then it'll get sharper right here towards the end. Okay, so let's take a look at the keyframes here. And we have the size. So I hit the space bar to, um, to be able to see the spline better. And this has a ease out and then an ease in. We don't need it to ease out because we don't see any of this motion anyways. So let's just change the shape of this graph a little bit. Okay, so it's gonna be linear at the beginning and then it's gonna ease in at the end. And we could Make that stronger if we wanted. And then the same thing with the position. Okay, we want it to be more linear at the beginning. And then, yeah, easing at the end. Let's see what that looks like. Let's take a look at our geometry here on the snowflake, because if we come in here and since it's being bent, we can see that it looks okay, but it could be could be better in here. So let's take a look at how we can fix that. So sometimes if we go into the spline itself, we can maybe change this to natural. And if we crank up the number of points, but this isn't really doing what we want. It's actually looking worse. Okay, so I'm going to undo that. Let's go into the extrude here. And on the caps, let's change this to quadrangles and a regular grid. And let's bring this down. We don't want to add too many. We don't want to lower the width too much. Otherwise, we're going to really slow things down. But I want it to where when we render this, it's nice and smooth. This is getting a little bit dense here, but maybe let's bring this back up. Maybe we need a combination of things. 
There we go. Okay, that's looking good. Okay, let's go ahead and get a floor added to our project here. So we're going to add a linear uh, spline. And let's go with F3 to go into the right view. And we're going to zoom out. And let's enable snapping. And I'm going to enable work plane snap and grid point snap. Because we want to make sure that we have it perfectly aligned along the ground plane here. And we're just going to set three points. Okay, in point mode, let's go ahead and select this corner point. And off to the side, I'm just going to right click. And I'm going to do it up high so that we can see the menu. And we want to select chamfer. And for the radius, I'm going to make it really large. I'm going to try 800. Okay, that looks good. Let's go back into our perspective view. And this will be our floor. This front point, oh, this front point, maybe. This front point here, I want to actually move forward just a little bit, make sure we have plenty of room. And let me actually come back in here and slide these points back just a little bit. So I like doing it this way. It gives us some flexibility on changing things around if we need to. Okay, let's go ahead and extrude this. And we can name this floor. And on the extrusion, let's see if we're in the right direction. I don't think so. So let's extrude it along the x-axis. Let's just crank this up. And we'll move our floor over. So we're never going to be zoomed out that much. So it's going to be in here. Okay, so we might be able to shrink that down just a little bit. Okay. All right, on this project, we want the snowflake to start in the ground and then as it peels up we want it to leave its shape behind so that it looks like this is actually being cut out of the ground and peeled up okay so in order to do that let's make a duplicate of the snowflake so i'm just going to do control drag down but before i do that let's actually um, rename this well not rename it but modify the name I'm just going to add an A to the end of this. And then I'm going to do control drag down. And this will be B. Because for each object that's going to peel up, we need to have a duplicate of it. And in B here, we're going to remove the bend deformer. And since this isn't being bent, we can actually uh, reduce some of this geometry. So I'm going to go back to Ngons and I'm going to go back to Adaptive here, okay, just so that we're not creating geometry that we don't really need. And so on the extrusion, we need to make it a little deeper. And then we can move this up so that our snowflake completely intersects the floor. And let's go ahead and add a bool object. And we'll make the floor and the snowflake a child of the bool. And here we have A subtract B. So let's move the floor to the top. And I'm actually going to hide snowflake A right now. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click the buttons there. 
So now we can see through our floor here in the shape of the snowflake. And now if I turn, so let's just do a little preview. Now if I turn the snowflake A back on and do a preview, we shouldn't see any lines or anything for that snowflake so that it's completely seamless. Okay, let's add our other two snowflakes into the scene. So let's make this nice and easy. We will just do control and drag down our first snowflake and let's rename this. And we'll go to File, Merge Objects. Let's bring in Snowflake 2. Scale, we're going to leave it as 1. Now, in order to get this to work really well, is what we need to do is make Snowflake 2 a child of Snowflake 1. And so I have a shortcut here, but I'll show you where it is just in case. Let's see. If we go to Mesh and then Access Center, and then we want um, Center to Parent. So now those two splines are matched up perfectly and I can now make Snowflake 2 a child of just the extrude and delete Snowflake 1. So now I should have two snowflakes coming up here together. Okay. Now obviously Snowflake 2 here we want to move. So let's go into the top view. And I want to move it off to the side. So I'm just going to hold down shift to snap to 10 degree increments. Let's just make it 800. And then I'm going to move it back. Let's maybe just do 400 to make it simple. And I think on the scale, let's go ahead and change the scale of this too so that the side ones are a little bit smaller. Let's go 0.75. Okay, and this actually needs to be A. And then let's make another copy of that. And so now we can just slide this one to the right. It should be 1600. Come on, so this will be negative 800. Okay, and we want these on the bend. Let's go ahead and get these to end a little bit after. Let's see how we're looking here. We want them to be a little bit delayed. So maybe 12 and 44. So I'm just changing the timing of the bend, of the keyframes on the bends so that they end a little bit later. Maybe, maybe eight. Alright, let's go ahead and move that 
floor over. Okay, looks good. Okay, so we also need the floor to be cut out for our smaller snowflakes as well. So let's come in here and let's duplicate our first one. So control drag and let's just add a B to the end of this. And we're gonna drop it into the bool here. And I think is what we need to do. Let's duplicate our third snowflake as well real quick. And let's go in, let's come out here to zero. And I'm gonna turn off the bool actually real quick. Let's delete the bend here and in our extrude. Let's go to caps. Let's make sure that those are back to end gons. And increase the extrusion. And let's take this back. Okay, so it's still on adaptive. So we'll have to go back and fix those because we didn't change those when, the, when we imported those. So we turn this bool back on and we run it. Let's see what we have here. So it's not working for our, our other two objects. So I think is what we do is if we select all of our snowflakes and do Alt G and put those into a null. Now we have cutouts for all those. Okay. And I believe on our snowflakes that we brought in here, they are not gonna bend very well. So if we come in here, we can see on our geometry here that they're not, we didn't set them up like we did the other ones. So on the extrude here, we go to caps. And let's take a look, what did we do on these? So we have five centimeters. And then on the spline itself, we need to go to, I think we went, yeah, we went to natural. And that looks pretty good. They're, these are gonna be kind of more background elements. So I don't wanna increase the number of points too much. Keep this thing um, kind of moving along smoothly. Okay, so let's just do a little preview when they're out and make sure we don't see any any lines. Looks good. Okay, let's go ahead and get in here and make our, our banner. So I'm gonna come out here to where our snowflake is vertical. Let's go into the front view here. Let's see, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our floor for right now. And let's turn off these other snowflakes. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the linear spline. And we want to turn snapping on. Let's come all the way out here. Now obviously you could do this in Illustrator and bring in the spline, but we're gonna see if we can create something here. 
in cinema. See, hard to tell if it's snapping. So on this top one here, I'm going to turn snapping off. Let's turn our guides back on. I'm just going to bring it up a little bit. Okay, let's see. Let's just try 10. Let's bring this down 10. And on the corners here, we're going to bring this in just a little bit. Okay, give it a nice end. Okay, so to smooth this out a little bit on the spline, I'm gonna come over here and for the type, we can change it, right, to different interpretations. And I think I might go with that. Okay, for time's sake, I'm gonna just keep that. We may come back and tweak this, so we'll take a look. Let's go ahead and, uh, oh, we wanna go ahead and extrude this, and let's just call this our ribbon. And let's go ahead and decrease its thickness. We need to, on the caps, come down here and change this to quadrant angles. Let's do a regular grid. So, I know getting really thick, dense uh, mesh like this isn't really good, but we're going to be, um, we're going to deform it along another spline. So, we need, we need you know, a fair amount of subdivision going on here. All right, so let's go ahead and go into our top view here. And we wanna make our spline for uh, this ribbon to animate along. So I'm gonna come back in here and select linear again. And let's start I don't want it to be too short. Let's just try this and we might have to tweak it. And we actually need to turn snapping back on. Let's make sure, yeah. I'm just gonna kinda try and eyeball something in here. It's always tough to record these tutorials at a lower resolution because I don't have a ton of space to work here. That looks good. Let's go ahead and just slide that back a little bit. So this um, path kind of, you know, wraps around our snowflake here. And let's call this ribbon path. Okay, we want to bring that path up here into the center. I'm going to turn snapping off. Let's turn off our ribbon real quick and take a look. Okay, that looks pretty good and we can adjust this uh, later on. So with our ribbon, I'm gonna go ahead and put this inside of a null, so Alt G. And let's call this ribbon again. And let's go ahead and turn it back on. And we're gonna select a deformer here. We're gonna do spline wrap. And we'll move that inside the null here. 
And with spline wrap, we can tell it which spline to deform our object along. And so we want to take our ribbon path and put it in here for the spline. So let's take a look at how this is looking. Okay, not bad. So the nice thing about this is um, we can offset this, right? So we can move this in and out and we can have it wrap around that spline. Now let's take a look at our mesh here. Okay, it's not looking too good right here. So let's go into, uh, let's take a look at our path real quick and see if changing this helps at all. So it helps a little bit, okay, to change that to natural, and we'll take it up. Um, instead of linear, maybe we want to do um, something that's, you know, a little smoother. And yeah, I don't know if that's going to help or not. I know one thing I want to do is on this ribbon, it's still a little bit thick. So let's come in here and decrease the thickness a bit. Okay, let's take a look at our caps and see if we can see if bringing down. So that's not really helping. Let's go into our spline and change this to natural. Oop, to natural. And let's increase our value here. Now we're getting a little bit closer to something acceptable. Let's try um, subdivided. So I'm really looking right here in this corner, right? I want it to be as smooth as possible. And I think I just came up with another idea that we can try. Let's go back to uniform seems to be working fairly well. So one thing I want to try is on the ribbon here, on our extrusion, let's actually have it go negative. And just because uh, we might be able to hide some of these imperfections on the back side of it instead. And that actually looks like it's working fairly decent. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now, one thing is on our spline here, um, let's turn this off and let's go back to our front. On our spline, I don't really like how far in these go, so let me go back to linear and let's go into point mode here. And let me just move these out just a little bit. Okay, so I'm liking that a little bit more. And obviously, you know, there's a million different ways to make uh, your shape for the ribbon. Okay. And like I said earlier, you know, you get a little bit more control, maybe if you're in Illustrator. But I like to look at this. This is looking good. So now with the spline wrap, we can animate our offset here. So it starts off the screen and then it comes in and animates into position. Okay, so let's have this. Let's take a look. So let's maybe have it be in place just a little bit after our snowflake comes in. So maybe right here at, I don't know, let's do a couple of frames after. Let's just say 36. So let's set this down to zero. Hold down control, set a keyframe, come out here, and let's have it start after the snowflake starts to come up. And so maybe right here at 16, let's go ahead and go negative. 
And we'll try that for right now. It's going to vary a little bit depending on where our camera is, right? So I'm kind of thinking that the camera will swing around from this side. So if we back up, we just want to make sure that it's off the screen. Okay, good. So let's go ahead and take a look at the timeline for our offset. And I normally, you know, jump to my layout, but it kind of destroys everything when I'm capturing. So let's just open up a timeline here. And for the spline wrap, for the offset here, we have a similar situation. So it's easing out and then easing in. We're not going to see that ease out. So we don't really need that. We can change this to be more linear. Okay, so it's going to ease out and then we will ease in. And we can also uh, change the value in the attributes window, or we can just pull this handle here. Okay, so if we uncheck auto, auto tangents, we can change this to zero, and then we know it's a perfectly straight line. We can do left time and adjust it here if we want. All right, so I want a nice ease in here. I'm gonna double check this one. Let's go ahead and make that just a little sharper so it's going to kind of pop in and let's see what that looks like here and then give us a nice ease there okay looking good okay next we need to add a few layers to this so that when we take it over into After Effects we can control the colors so we're not going to do a lot of texturing um, here in Cinema 4D most of the colors will come from um, what we do over in After Effects just because it's going to give us a lot more flexibility and so we can make changes a lot faster. We can come up with a lot of different variations here. So let's go ahead and turn our other snowflakes on. And we need to get in here to the bool, turn the floor back on so we can see what's going on. And we want to be able to color um, these places here on the ground where the snowflakes where the snowflakes are so that as they peel up we see a different color underneath so we're just going to do that by placing a plane in here and for this the width uh, segments and height we're just going to change that to one by one okay and we need to make this a little bit larger so it covers up the entire hole and let's move that into place and we need it to be need not be in that view that's for sure we need it to be just underneath the surface here okay and depending on uh, what look you want you know how far it goes we'll probably um, tweak this a little bit but you can have this layer be really far or you know really close depending on how much of a gap you want in there so I'll show you what we mean here in a second so this is going to be um, well we just call it plane 01 just to keep it simple and then hold down control and drag to duplicate it And let's move this one over here. And then we have our next one. And just to show you what we're doing here, let's go ahead and just throw on a white texture. Okay, so that when we render this now, we have um, a little peel away part, okay, and it's going to be a different color. We're going to be able to control those colors in After Effects individually, okay. Okay, let's go ahead and add our camera to the scene. So I'm going to do that um, by, I'm going to go ahead and first add a null, and I want to place this null 
right in the middle of our snowflake here. Okay, and we're going to use this as our target for our camera. Okay, so let's just name this target. Let's go ahead and add our camera. And for our camera, focus object right here, we're going to go ahead and put in target. And that's actually not what we want to do. So let's move this over. Let's go ahead and clear this. Uh, on the camera, we actually want to go and go Cinema 4D Tags and then Target. Okay, and then we can put our target object in there. And for the camera, I'm going to come in here so we can see multiple views. And we'll keep the camera movement fairly simple here. Okay. So let's see where we are at the beginning. So at the beginning, I kind of want the camera to start in close and then kind of pull around as, as those snowflakes come up. Okay, and we'll probably have to extend our floor there. Okay, let's go ahead and set our keyframes here for the camera. And then we'll try and just have one more set of keyframes at the end. So at the end here, so I'm looking at this last snowflake coming up. Let's go ahead and get to about, let's just say 48. Keep it simple. We'll pull around. And zoom out and then bring the camera down let's see what we have here let's shorten this up Let's go ahead and preview this. Okay, so uh, fairly simple, but, uh, but I like it. I think for the sake of this tutorial, we'll continue forward. Okay, let's add some lighting to our project. Now for this um, particular project, I'm gonna use a free preset. Okay, and we'll provide a link for you. So this is called right here MMG the Illuminati. Okay, and this is pretty nice. I think it, I like what it does. It'd be easy to set up, but you know presets are always nice to save us a little bit of time. So basically, it's just cloning lights along around a sphere, right? So we can um, come in here and let's increase the radius. Of this and I'm gonna bring this up so it's a little bit closer to the center of our main snowflake here let's come out to where you know the whole scene kind of resolves itself let's see what we have here let's see the shadow map let's maybe increase that a little bit Okay, and that's not too bad. I don't really love what it's doing in the back there. So I think one thing I want to do on this is utilize global illumination. Okay, so let's add also ambient occlusion because the ambient occlusion is going to help us get a little bit of separation between that plane and our cutout. And then let's use global illumination. Now, um, you know, it's always a little tricky. I'm in R15 here, 
And for this particular scene, I found that the QMC works the best for the primary method and secondary method, I'm going to use uh, radiosity maps. And, and actually, instead of using the standard renderer, I'm going to go in and use the physical. I seem to f find that I have less trouble uh, with the renders as far as flickering and those types of things. So I'm going to plug in some values here um, that I found gives me a good compromise as far as the balance between quality and render time. Obviously, you know, you need to kind of figure out what is best for your situation. But for this particular project, I found that these values, you know, there's a good balance there. So I, I like the way the renders look and they don't take too long. Okay, let's, uh, let's see if we got things working right. Let's do a little preview here. And we see nothing. So we have to make sure in the Illuminati here at the bottom we have seen by GI. Alright, let's try that now. And obviously since we're using GI we have um, you know a little bit longer render time but you know our animation is only 56 frames long so this shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. And as we can tell by looking at it, it looks much nicer than uh, than it did before. And for those of you out there that you know are obviously that are much better at, at lighting than I am, you could probably get away without using global illumination. Um, I would say that lighting is not my my strongest uh, point in here. Okay, I'm really liking how that's looking. Okay, I want to make just a couple of changes to this project here before we new, before we move forward. So one thing that I'm noticing with my camera is um, at the end here, we're a little bit far away. So let's come in here and just make an adjustment here on our keyframe. I think I'd rather be a little bit closer. I don't care if we, you know, how well these other snowflakes are in here, but I want it to fill up the scene a little bit more here. Okay, because we're going to put text on that banner, so I don't really want to be too far away. Okay, I like that. So let's go ahead and set our keyframes, and I want to check the timeline just to make sure on our camera here. Okay, so this looks good. So um, we're easing out and easing in, which works uh, nicely. And we don't have a ton of rotation here. All right. So now as this comes around, we'll be a little bit closer to the snowflake and we won't be so far away. Okay, that looks good. Now one other thing I wanna do, let's see if we can uh, totally destroy what we have set up so far, is on our little snowflakes, they're bent the same way as our original one. And I think it might look cool if they actually peeled uh, from the front and went back. So let's see if we can just rotate some things around here without totally destroying this. I'm not sure how well it's going to work out. So I'm going to take snowflake B, that's the one on the ground, and I'm going to take snowflake, so this is 02B and then I need 02A. And we're going to go ahead and rotate this 180 degrees. Come on. Okay, just like that. And let's see before we touch the other one if this worked out for us. And let's just take this plane as well and move it forward. Let's turn our camera back on. So now, as we come around, yeah, I like that. 
Okay, so uh, this snowflake is peeling up, and the snowflake over here is peeling um, away from us, right? And so we're going to be able to see this cut out on the ground a lot better. And I think now that I've done that, well, we actually need to move it back a little bit. Since we spun it 180 degrees, it's a little bit too close. So before we, before we fix that, let's go in here and do the same thing with our other one. So this is where naming everything really well uh, helps out because we know what is what. Let's go ahead and move that 180 degrees. And so now let's take all of our components of this smaller snowflake. Let's take these two and actually let's not because I kind of moved one and not the other. So let's move these back. Maybe right there. And let's see where these planes are at now. Let's just get them close. All right, let's turn the camera back on to see what we have. Yeah, I like that. So um, as these peel up on the top side, we'll be able to have uh, one color. And then on the side that's facing the camera now, that the part that was laying flat, we'll be able to have a separate color. And it'll just make uh, this final scene look a little bit better, give us a little more flexibility in After Effects. Okay, next we just need to set some object buffers so that when we go over in After Effects, we're gonna be able to take our one render pass and break it out into individual pieces. So let's just come in here and on plane one, and actually, I don't really love calling this plane one. Let's just call this um, snow flake one, and maybe we can call it like um, hole. And then we have, was that snowflake two? I'm just trying to keep everything organized here so that when we get into After Effects, we know what is what. And then snowflake three. Okay, so I'm gonna right click Cinema 4D tags. Let's see if we can get the menu over here a little bit more. And we want a compositing tag, right? And the object buffer, we want object buffer number one. I'm gonna control drag down and then change that to number two. Control that, drag down, and change that to number three. And then we also need one for our ribbon. So I'm gonna control, drag down, and make that number four. And we want one for our floor, so we can change the color of that too if we want. So let's make that number five. And let's rename that. And then let's go ahead and do one for each of our um, main snowflakes that are peeling up. So this is gonna be number six, number seven, and number eight. Okay, so that'll definitely get us started uh, for um, setting this up in After Effects. I have a couple ideas that we may jump back over here and create some custom um, object buffers using materials for, but um, we'll wait and see if we can get away without needing them. All right, so to render this out, let's go back into our render settings and let's go output. We're gonna do all frames, so we only have 56 frames, so that's pretty, pretty easy um, 1920 by 1080 now we need to give it a place to save this to so I don't know if I have a place yet yep right there 
So I'm going to call this RGB pass. And then I also want one for the buffers. Okay, and then we have to select multi-pass. Okay, and so for the multi-pass, I want to save this to um, the buffers folder. And we're just going to use that as, um, let's see, let's take off the underscore. Okay, layer name is suffix, that sounds good. So it'll be buffer and then um, we'll have uh, the, the layer name there. For a compositing project file, we wanna make sure that, yeah, we save an After Effects project file. And include 3D data, yes. Let's go back and add a tag for that real quick. But before we do that, um, let's make sure that in multi-pass that we add object buffer number one. And then we need to keep doing this for, I believe we got up to eight. Yes, so we have to do this eight times. And this is always a lot of fun, let's see. Kind of surprised that there hasn't been something a bit better for doing this. All right, so we have, just double check and make sure we have one through eight. Okay, so we'll get a separate pass for that. Uh, and this is all being, a lot of this is being ran right by the physical renderer. So, um, so these settings um, kind of play into the anti-aliasing. So there's not a whole lot to do here, okay? Um, as far as uh, 3D data goes that we might wanna add to this is uh, the target here. So let's go ahead and add an external compositing tag for the target of our camera. And I think I also want one. Now our ribbon because I think we want to add text here and I'm afraid that with my ribbon now, let's see if I can change the, I hit L on the keyboard to go into the enable access modification mode. And I want to just see if I can change this without affecting our project here. So sometimes with that spline wrap, it kind of, uh, and make things a little wonky here. So I just wanna make sure that it's right on the face. Okay, that looks good. So hopefully, hopefully I didn't mess anything up doing that. Okay, that looks good. So I'm gonna just hold down control. And actually, I don't need one on the target probably now because they're in a very similar place. So I'm just gonna move that down to our ribbon. Okay, so that I make sure that we get a null object in After Effects for that position. So then we can attach text to it. And I don't think there's anything else we need the position for on this. I think that'll be, that'll be good right there. All right, so let's go ahead and render this out and we'll jump over to After Effects and see how we can uh, create our final look.